Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can root and install a custom ROM on your Galaxy S5 and the Verizon version of the S5 here. So as we can see right here, we have the um, Verizon version of the Galaxy S5 and basically this phone is um, not rootable very easily. So I'm going to show you the method on how you can root it. Now you're going to need to go to this link here on xdaforums.com, xda developers. I'll have this in the link in the description. And once you're here, you're going to want to install the root, root tools here. And the Google Drive link here is dead. Um, so go to the one that just says Android file host mirror here and you'll be able to find it and hit start download. and just choose the primary download. It's gonna be wherever the closest to you is. Now, while this is downloading, you're gonna to wanna to also find your ROM. Now, for the Verizon Galaxy S5, you can you don't have to use ROMs just made for the Galaxy, Verizon Galaxy S5. You can just use ones that are for the regular S5. So if we look up this and Verizon Galaxy S5 XEA devs, um, we can find Galaxy S5 Unity uh, Unified Development on XEA Developers. And we should be able to find some ROMs here. Now you can go all the way up to Android 13 with the ROMs for this phone. I've tested all the way to Android 13 with the ROMs on this phone. Um, however, I'm gonna go with the classic um, Cyanogen mod uh, for Android 6.0. However, you could choose whatever ROM you would like. It's the flashing process is gonna be the same for the most part. Now, when you're looking for a ROM, just make sure it has KLTE in it. So this is Lineage OS 18.1 based off Android 11, just as an example. And you could see that it does support the KLTE version because we could see build compatibility and we could see KLTE. And that includes the G900V, which is the Verizon version of the S5. So now that we know our ROM supports the Verizon version of the S5 or just supports KLTE in general, we can go ahead and proceed with the download. So my ROM here, we could just go ahead and download it. Now you're going to want to download the .zip format and just go ahead and download that from wherever the mirror will be. And you should be able to find it just in the XDA here. There will be links for lineage for CR droid all the different types of ROMs for your phone uh, now for the root we're gonna need to install something called magisk so just look up magisk you should be able to find the github link right here and just scroll down and you should be able to find the releases sorry I'm used to mobile usually it's down there so hit releases and download the magisk APK and now that you have the APK, just go to your um, folder where it installed. And we're going to go ahead and change that .apk to .zip so we can flash it in TWRP once we change the bootloader on here and install the custom recovery of TWRP. So now that we have everything installed, including the S5 root tools, what you're going to want to do is we're going to have to turn off Windows Defender. This is a precaution because Windows Defender thinks of the exploit that we're going to use to unlock the bootloader for this phone as a virus. It's not a virus, it just exploits the phone's bootloader. So you don't need to worry about this. So just go over to Virus and Threat Protection, hit Manage Settings, and just turn off Real-Time Protection. Sorry if the screen went blank turn off all the protections and then we could just go ahead and turn it back on after the phone is rooted. So now we're going to go ahead and extract the S5 root tools and you will probably need 7-zip for this because it is a .7z format. 7-zip or WinRAR for this. Now we can go ahead and open up the folder S5 root tools and click the folder again and you should be able to find something safestrap.exe. Go ahead and open this. Sorry if my screen went blank again. That's again because of the user account control. So now we should see the CMD window and basically what this will do is it will give us some um, 
checklists. So close all open windows except for the one on this computer or unneeded programs. I, I'll just keep it open. It's okay. Not that big of a deal. Unplug all USB connections other than the one for the phone. So you're going to need to plug your USB into your phone here. So go ahead and go and grab a micro USB cable and go over to your computer and plug in your micro USB. Now I'm going to unplug the other USBs that's plugged into my other phone because I don't want it to get confused. It will also want you to remove all accounts and lock screen security. So let me go remove accounts. So, so for your Google account, I'm blocking the name. What you're gonna to wanna to do is just go ahead and hit remove account, remove account. And you're gonna to wanna to do this so we don't get FRP locked out of our phone. And now we shouldn't have any accounts logged in on the phone. So now that we have done that, uh, we can hit any key to continue. Now, before we do that, actually, sorry, we're going to need to set our screen on, uh, screen timeout time to 10 minutes. So just go over to your phone and you can go to the settings and go to display and screen timeout. And on screen timeout, choose the longest, which is 10 minutes. Now we can hit any key to continue. So just hit the any key to continue. Make sure you're in the safe strap here. Now it will start the ADB server. Now it's gonna want us to enable USB debugging. Now basically to enable this, you're gonna wanna go to your settings, swipe down, hit settings. And in settings, scroll all the way down to about phone. And on about phone, you're just going to want to go to your build number and tap this until it says developer mode has been turned on. Now I already have it on. Now that you've done that, go back, go to developer options and hit USB debugging and make sure that USB debugging is on and allow USB debugging. And make sure that we accept the USB debugging screen after that. So now we're just gonna hit press any key to continue and now we're going to always allow from this computer and hit okay. Now I'll press any key to continue and it will reboot the phone to its bootloader automatically through ADB commands. And now we should see the downloading with the Android logo here. If phone did not reboot to download automatically, do this, uh, reboot your phone using um, Turn it off first and then volume down plus home button at the same time. So volume down, power, and home button at the same time, and you'll get to the same screen if it didn't do that. Now we could just hit any key to continue, and it should flash the files to the phone here. And now once that's done, the phone will reboot to recovery and we should boot into TeamWin recovery project after our data has been wiped. We may boot into a different UI first. Uh, that is also very common and that probably will happen before we can boot into TeamWin recovery project. And our phone is booting into a basic ROM and that's basically what this is. It's a ROM that is like, it's almost like a developer kit. It's pretty hard to explain. However, we're just in here to root the phone, basically. As you can see, you have all your information and model number on the phone. And it's just a very basic version of TouchWiz that's installed right now. Now it's preparing the phone to connect and the part one has been completed. It basically turns airplane mode on and installs King Root.
now it is using Kingroot to root the phone first, and then it will install TWRP. Now this is a good sign if you see a bunch of hashtags, that means it's working properly. And the root has been done. And now it detects the EMMC 15. Now, if your phone's at EMMC 11, this won't work. Uh, you'll probably see it in the beginning that it won't work. Basically, now it's going to copy the ROM to the phone and unlock the bootloader. And this may take a few minutes, so be patient. All right, now the file has been pushed to the phone, and it'll show a bunch of uh, hashtags again. Now it will be rebooting to safe strap to finish up. And as we can see, the phone now should boot into TWRP, and once we're in TWRP, we should be able to boot to TWRP after this, and boom, we're in Team One Recovery Project here. And now I'll say your phone will reboot to SafeStrap, uh, and install a minimal 6.0 ROM. Now we're going to install our own ROM, so we could just exit out at this point. And now that we have installed our ROM, and Magisk earlier, we can move those over to the phone. So grab these two and copy them. So now before we copy those, the phone will auto restart. And this is just to fully unlock the bootloader. And now we're back into Team One Recovery Project. Go ahead and swipe to allow modifications. And before we move anything over, we're going to want to wipe and swipe to factory reset. And now go ahead and hit back. Now we can go over here and we can just paste in here and it will move over our ROM that we downloaded earlier and the Magisk file. So now that we have these two, go ahead and hit the back key here and hit install inside of TWRP and scroll down. And we should see Magisk, but first we're going to want to install a ROM. And ROM.zip is the minimal 6.0 ROM, so you're just going to want to flash whichever one you downloaded, so you can find the name by going to your downloads. And this is the ROM that I have, it's called CM13.0. Now whatever your ROM is named, just go ahead and go over to the phone and flash it. Now, you can install whatever ROM you want. Just head over to the XDA developers and find a ROM that supports the KLTE version of this phone. I'll leave that in the link in the description. So now we're just gonna wanna hit our ROM here. So mine's CM, starts with CM 13.0. And I'll swipe to confirm the flash. And now we can wait. This usually takes around two minutes to finish the flashing process of the ROM. Okay, so now the ROM has finished, it just says done. We can head back and click the magisk2.zip and swipe to confirm the flash as well for magisk. So now that magisk has finished up, we can go ahead and hit wipe dalvik slash cache and just swipe to wipe this. And now we can reboot to our system by hitting the reboot system icon and now we can see this little unlock icon here this means that we're running a custom rom and custom recovery so that's a good sign and as you can see i could see the cyanogen mod boot up screen and this is the rom that i have chosen so now you should be booting into your rom first boot may take a few minutes so now we are in my ROM here, or your ROM, Cyanogen Mod. Um, your ROM will probably be different than mine. Now we can just go ahead and quickly set this up. If you want to use this, set it up faster, I guess. But for me, I'll just set it up quickly. 
Now we're going to want to go to our app launcher and find Magisk. And if you don't see Magisk, what we're going to want to do, which is a common possibility if you don't see the Magisk app, we're going to want to go back to our file explorer here and go to Magisk and rename that back to APK. Now once we do that, press yes, go ahead and right click and hit copy and move it over to the phone. And we'll probably have to approve of it first through file transfer and then now we can go to the phone and drop Magisk into it here. Now on the phone, we're gonna want to go to the File Explorer app. So the File Manager, allow, and in the File Manager, we should go to the where we dropped it, which is here, Magisk APK, go to your settings, and enable unknown sources, and press back and hit the Magisk APK again and press install. And now Magisk should install its APK onto the phone. Now that the app's installed, we'll go ahead and hit open. And now we're gonna wanna hit install, allow, and check that and hit next. And we're gonna wanna hit direct install and press let's go and it will repack the boot image, flashing boot image, and done. So now Magisk is on our phone, we're gonna go ahead and reboot. So now once the phone is rebooted, I installed a basic root check app here, and if we hit agree on the root checker, I'll be able to show you that the phone is rooted. You don't need to install this app, this is just to verify that the phone has been rooted. And as you can see, congratulations, your device has been rooted here. And yeah, that's it. That's how you can install a custom ROM onto a Verizon Galaxy S5 and root it. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'm going to make a video for how to do the same thing with the OnePlus 7 Pro. It's actually the phone that's recording this video right now, recording the phone. And yeah, stay tuned if you want to see that, and goodbye.